And you do have a right to be rich. Whatever may be said in praise of poverty, the fact remains, it is not possible to live a really complete or successful life unless one is rich. We cannot rise to our greatest possible height in talent or soul development unless we have plenty of money. In order to unfold the soul and to develop talent, we must have many things to use, and we cannot have these things unless we have the money to buy them with. You know, I'll frequently share just those first few lines with an audience in a live seminar, and then I'll ask for a response. And sometimes I don't get a response. I get an immediate reaction from some people, and they'll say, well, I just don't believe that. What about Mother Teresa? She didn't have any money. Well, the truth is, Mother Teresa was one of the richest women on the planet. She was like royalty. She didn't even have to carry any money. She had the ability to walk into the executive office of any of the large companies in the world, and they'd give her virtually whatever she asked. She didn't need her own plane. She had an Air Force at her beck and call. Now, think about this for a moment. She really understood how to live the rich life. Now, the fact that she worked amongst poverty, she was attempting to raise their consciousness. The lady had the right idea, but there's no way that you'll ever convince me or anyone else who has really studied this material that Mother Teresa was not rich. People develop in mind, soul, and body by making use of things. And society is so organized that people must have money in order to become the possessor of things. Therefore, the basics of all human advancement must be the science of getting rich. I want you to go back with me mentally. I want you to go way back until we were living in a very crude manner and we were probably out looking for our foodstuffs with a bow and arrow. And you and I were neighbors, and we would go hunting together. And I always admired the way you made your arrows. They were so straight and true. When mine always had a hook in them, I would fire my arrow on, woo, it would go off in the wrong direction. I loved hunting, but I just didn't know how to cut arrows. You knew how to make arrows, but you just didn't like to hunt. One day, I went over and asked you if you wanted to go hunt, and you said, no, nah, I don't want to go. And I said, well, you need some meat. And you said, I know, but I just don't feel like it. And one of us come up with a brilliant idea. I said, wait a minute. How would it be if I do your hunting for you and you make my arrows for me? And we cut a deal. Trade and commerce was established in our mind. So I would get arrows from you and I would bring you meat. Then one day I went over and I wanted some more arrows and you said, no, I don't need any meat. I said, well, give me some arrows anyway. No, I don't need the meat. When I need the meat, I'll give you some arrows and you can give me the meat. Well, you see, that idea didn't work very well. So then we come up with something we called money. And I'd say, listen, let this represent something that we can use in exchange. You give me this when you want meat. I give you this when I want arrows. Now, I know that's not the way it started, but it was something along that line. But you see, money is an idea. Richness is a concept. It's a consciousness. The object of all life is development. Everything that lives has an inalienable right to all the development it is capable of attaining. Each of us has a right to life. This means the right to have the free and unrestricted use of all the things that may be necessary to our fullest mental, spiritual, and physical unfolding. In other words, our right to be rich.